Good evening and thank you for joining us. You are watching Sunday Interview and I'm your host, Gravazio Zulu. Now, the former ruling party, the movement for multi-party democracy, has been on a downward trend since it fell from grace in 2011. Its parliamentary seats have dwindled, while a good number of its members have equally defected to other political parties. Internal wrangles have not helped matters. Will the party, well known for the reintroduction of multi-party democracy and economic liberalization, survive its rules? Who is best to answer that question than MMD President Dr. Nevers Sequila Mumba? Dr. Mumba is our guest this evening. Dr. Mumba, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Gravazio, and to our listeners, it's a great evening, and I look forward to having an engaging discussion with you today. What has been left of the former ruling party? That's the biggest question at the moment. Well, thank you so much, for, firstly, for the invitation and uh, the opportunity for us to uh, talk about issues that concern our party. Firstly, I would like to state that uh, some of the introductory remarks that you've made uh, seem to suggest uh, a situation or a scenario where the movement for multi-party democracy is not doing anything to get itself to the place where it should be. And that is the point that I want to put across today. Firstly, you must understand that when you talk about the declining of the movement for multi-party democracy, any political party that is in government and loses power, the decline begins before the loss of power in the eyes of the voter to the extent that the climax of the voting actually decides whether the, poli the political power in government has been declining or has been going up. And I also want you to understand that where we are today, if it was not for a resilient leadership of the National Executive Committee and the entire membership in the country, this political party would not be here today. But I would like to use this opportunity to congratulate all the members of our party for a sustained fight to keep democracy alive in this country. A lot of people would be interested in, 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 in trying to understand your decision to vie for, 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 for the position for a party which clearly had lost popularity, which clearly had lost people's confidence and trust. Well, You I, decided you were going to take up this position. Exactly. Uh, and what, I, was, I, what was the motivation behind that? I have actually no regrets concerning the fact that I ran for uh, the presidency of the party. If you look into my history uh, f to make that decision, I have always done things that I believe are projects that are given to me by God or by colleagues uh, to fix. Uh, to work on something and make a project better than it was, uh, leave it in a better state than I found it. But I think we need to clarify a number of issues before we, we go any further. The reason I've congratulated the members of our party and the National Executive Committee is because if it was not the MMD, maybe, uh, I think that there would have been difficulties in that particular political party uh, to remain alive today. Remember, when we lost the election in 2011, September, a series of events took place. Immediately after that, our president, President Rupia Banda, resigned from being president of the party. So it remained without a head for close to eight months. Then shortly after that, we realized that the movement, I mean the Patriotic Front, decided now to assault our party to make sure they decimate the opposition movement for multi-party democracy. Number one, they went ahead and petitioned all the 55 seats uh, that we won in 2011. Uh, secondly, they went ahead to poach a number of our members of parliament to continue to uh, diminish the numbers of our members of parliament in the house. That was blow number two. Blow number three, they continued to look for cases against our leaders so that they can demoralize the party and also the leadership of our party. It was one thing after the other. As, uh, as we move forward, we ended up with a political party that was bleeding in many ways. Uh, by the time I took over in 2012, in, in May, uh, the party had gone through a lot of battering. And I can say, if you ask me of the state of the party now, the state of the party at the moment is that it is more stabilized now than it has ever been before. Of but course, still bleeding. No, uh, no, no, I wouldn't say the word, I wouldn't use the word bleeding. I would use the word um, battle-proven. Uh, it has been, uh, we have been... Um, hit from every direction. So it, it's, a, it's a situation of saying that the soldiers are weary. They have been fighting 
for, for survival, not just of the party, but survival of democracy in this country. You seem, you seem to be blaming the Patriotic Front for, 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 for petitioning the seats, but this is a democratic right that every Zambian has. MMD would have done the same, really. And the fact that a good number of these seats have been nullified by the courts, doesn't this justify the decision taken by the, it does, the independent uh, members? It doesn't make it any less of a fight. The point I'm trying to make today is to allow you to see and our viewers to understand the challenges we have surmounted over the past two years. That the courage, the resilience, the leadership, the collective effort to ensure that no force from within or from without is going to destroy the party or destroy uh, the democratic uh, process of this country. But that is, is, what is I'm it proud fair of. to push the fact that uh, your members were corrupt in the way they conducted the elections in 2011? the way they campaigned. Is it fair to say this is a fight by the PF, when in fact the courts have said, yes, there was corruption involved? Listen, we... It's, it's something we, you do not want to agree. We dealt, we dealt with this many months ago. We have difficulties as a movement for multi-party democracy. To take your line, for instance, how do you explain a member of parliament from MMD, his seat is nullified, and, uh, or rather, he, he's, con he's considered... Um, uh, that his seat is petitioned, rather, not notified. The seat is petitioned. Then later on, he's appointed deputy minister uh, of PF. Then nobody talks about his case, and it goes quiet because now he's on the other side. And you're going to see that if, if the truly PF meant it to say that MMD was corrupt, there was no reason why they should be poaching the corrupt members of parliament from MMD. So the, the, there's a situation there that I want the Zambian people to know. It was nothing but politics. Obviously, there are many things that could come out in the courts of law, and we have no power as to what the courts say. But we do know that this was a political crusade to decimate the movement for multi-party democracy. And the answer is the resilience of the leadership, the membership all across the country of MMD fought back, and we are alive today because of that spirit of fighting and ensuring that democracy... Some people would say, no... Because of all the fights we have fought with the Whig Party, or we have weak leadership, the opposite is true. The opposite is true because if it was lazy and weak leadership, MMD would not be here today. But today we are debating, moving forward, and preparing to take office again in 2016. Why? Because we have fought a resilient fight. And we are committed to ensuring that up to the end, MMD shall emerge victorious. But we are not intimidated by fights. We are not intimidated by attacks from both within and outside. I think where we have come now, we can truly say that there has been a collective effort to defend the party, to defend democracy from people that have been inside, maybe used to demo, you know, uh, demoralize the party. We have fought together with the National Executive Committee, with the provincial leaders, to make sure that the MMD remains as strong as it is starting to become now. So I'm very confident that where we are going is much, much better than where you we are going. You sound confident, and, but going by the results of the just-ended by-elections, the recent by-elections, probably we could even go back to February, mm -hmm. it points to the fact that Zambians have withdrawn, or the electorate have withdrawn support from the MMD. I don't think so. I think if you said that, then every political party will say the same. I think that PF will find itself in a very sad story. Uh, they have lost some elections with high margins. That doesn't mean people have immediately withdrawn. And UPND has lost with huge margins. It, it's, it's a democratic process that happens to every political party. Today you win, tomorrow you lose. But let me concentrate on the, the movement for multi-party democracy. That's the party of which I'm president. I, I think that the way we have performed, if you go back to the time that uh, I, I got the presidency of MMD in 2012, the, the with all the challenges we faced, with all the batterings that we felt, and obviously when you are battered as much as we were battered, you, you, you feel uh, weary, battle weary, and, and, and a lot of our members feel that fatigue because of fighting. But if you remember, there were two by-elections that happened uh, immediately we lost the election, I mean in 2011, before I became president, there was uh, Bakonde, there was Chongwe. We lost those elections. The people were dejected. Our members were, some of them were, were, were really in a confused state because they had been in power for 20 years. And when you switch over from Kabulonga uh, to another, to a compound, there's going to be that shock. And some of our members were still grasping uh, the truth of the fact that we're no longer in power. We lost those. When I became president, we had two by-elections. 
One was in Muchinga constituency after we lost um, uh, Honorable George Kunda, the former vice president. May so rest in peace. Then we also had another one in, uh, uh, in Eastern Province, in Chama. And uh, we moved in, as a new president, we moved in there and fought resiliently for those two seats. If you remember, we came victorious uh, in Muchinga province and beat the, uh, the PF, which was very strong at that particular time. We lost in, uh, in Chama. But you could see that th there was that spirit that was going on of wanting to make sure that MMD reclaimed its political space. We had a problem. Shortly after that, if you remember, we had challenges within our own party. We had a situation where our national secretary at that time uh, was asked to, to, to st step aside and he decided to fight. And that fight continued for a long time. Now, a political party is like a bank. You put money there because the bank is stable. When they start to see, people start to see movement, they hold back to wait for you to sort out your problems. And if you notice from that moment, uh, people started to, to gauge us to see, are these people a united lot? Are they supporting their leadership? Are they working together as a team? So those events that happened affected even the performance of the political party. And it's just a natural phenomenon that happens. And my job as president, the job of my colleagues in the National Security Committee, is to make sure that we deal with that apparent disunity and create a, a force and a movement and a machine that could be united in order for us to perform in 2016. You've looked back at, at quite a number of by-elections. I want to bring you very closer, probably this year, let's begin from February. You've, out of the six, you are the biggest loser in these by-elections that have happened. Out of the six by-elections, the recent ones, we, you have only picked one. And five of these were your seats. We're looking at, uh, apart from Zambezi West, we're looking at uh, Kasenengo, we're looking at Katuba, we're looking at Mangango, we're looking at Sorosa Central, Vubu and Kushi South. You, you've lost all these. You've only picked Kasenengo. Do you see yourself in a situation where come 2016, you'll probably be not the biggest opposition party, but probably trailing even be, be, be below unique? Absolutely not. You know, when you look at uh, what has happened since January, I've already given you the scenario. MMD, the first two years, has been reorganizing itself or trying to get its traction as a result of the loss in 2011. And people, when we lost the election, of course, people had different views of what needed to happen. And because of that, it's a democratic party. This person will say this, this person will say that. So we went through a lot of things that actually affected even our capacity to be able to context, contest effectively. But I want to mention that um, I do not get shaken at all by a loss or even a victory, especially when you're in the process of going somewhere. If my, President Michael Sartre... Not when you lose five seats. No. Listen, that's, when that's you a deal huge with, number. Yeah, but look at it this way. We are looking at 2016. At 2016, we are going to lose some seats. We are going to win some seats. The aggregate vote that we're going to get from across the country will decide who the president becomes. And if you look at the aggregate vote that was gotten over the five, five, five by-elections, we actually came very close second. We're almost first um, in these by-elections because you add all the votes to become to form government. And those are things that we should consider instead of just saying you lost this seat, you lost this seat, you lost this seat. Those seats are being lost for various reasons. And some of those reasons will not be present in 2016. How do you explain a loss like, for instance, in Mangango, where you only picked 150, is it 136 votes? Well, you're going to realize that when you're in a campaign, uh, there are forces that are at play that sometimes you are going to find that the people you are contesting against they are going to be in Zambian politics. There are times when you get results that even don't belong to you. And you don't know at that particular time. But all I can say at the moment is that we are not the first party to get those few votes. I mean, you've got UPND in Wapula. They got very few votes in Mansa Central. But they move forward. The fact we got um, uh, very few votes in Mangango, but we got the highest vote in Kasenengwa. That's just the way demographics of the country. And lost your own seat in Bubi. And lost, and lost your own seat in uh, and we're Central. We are reviewing. And reviewing. lost your own foot, 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 uh, seat in Mukoshi South. If you are going and to lost another seat in Katuba. Yeah. All these are MMD seats gone to the ruling party. I think I've already given you the, the, the scenario of where we are coming from. Every political party that loses power goes through phases. 
and the good news is that we are fixing what has happened in the, in the past. And we do not think that we are going to be held to say that because we did not win this particular seat, we didn't win that particular seat, then we are not going to win tomorrow's seat. I think that in politics, in a democracy, once you lose, you go back to the drawing board and plan again. Even when you win, you still go to sit down to see how you're going to sustain such kind of a victory. So for us, and for, for, for athletes that are successful, for those who become champions, they never get discouraged by a loss which is temporal. Because today's loss is not going to be tomorrow's loss. You learn from the loss, and tomorrow's game or tomorrow's contest, you are going to draw strength, and you're going to draw wisdom from the experience that you had in the last election. And I can only say we are learning from um, what happened in the past. I think we performed much, much better in this last round because considering all the things that the PF was doing and what they've been trying to do, we think that our votes were much, much more. We came second uh, in the aggregate and we are going to continue to build on that. And I know that as we unite ourselves as a party, nothing is going to stand. You are learning lessons. What have you learned? Where is the problem? Is it the candidates? Is it the lack of resources? Is it your leadership, which is probably has not been accepted? Let me help the nation that when you are faced with a political party that was in government and has gone through what we have gone through and has started to rise now, there are various reasons why you lose uh, a seat. Some of them, it could be the candidate that is put up, put up. Sometimes it could be the rigging that is taking place. And other times it's going to be probably uh, the, you have not put in enough money. Uh, that could also affect it. Um, a political party is not about one individual, like some of our opponents are trying to portray, for instance. Some of them will try to portray that this issue is about Never Smumba uh, because he's the president. Well, the good news is that to them, the good news to them is that they haven't seen, they have not had an opportunity to see this political party under another leader after the loss in 2011, what it could have looked like. So they can only talk about what we are doing now. I am confident that the battles we have fought have helped us remove MMD from the intensive care unit in which it was after all the attacks, all the batterings. I think we have now come to the level of reorganizing ourselves. There are many reasons why an election is lost. And once an election is lost, we have what we call post-mortem. We go back to look at what really caused that loss. And we learn from that. If we fail to learn from that, then we are not doing um, uh, ourselves any good. And I think that MMD has been very, very precise in trying to understand what happened in every individual election. And out of that, we do not think we'll be going backwards. I think we're going forward. Every political party in this country, including the PF, when they're in the opposition, they lost numerous seats, but they never got discouraged. They kept fighting. The difference probably between the Patriotic Front and the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy is that we are coming out of government, learning how to be in opposition. They came from the opposition with the fighting spirit all the way. And I think that this is now happening in us, that we're starting to learn this is a fight, a fight we need to fight with our souls and our spirits. And so we are at a place now where we're encouraging all our members, regardless of who, who they are. Do, do, do you feel your leadership has been accepted in the party? I think or are you still struggling to stamp your authority on the party? Well, I think that I've already given you understanding that a party that has come from a loss, it needs delicate leadership. It needs wisdom to bring it out because people are bruised, people are hurting, people are upset, some people are just disillusioned. And that's why the leadership of transition between a loss and the victories that will start in MMD is a very, very uh, critical type of leadership. It's a leadership that must keep the bruised. It must encourage the strong. It must be able to facilitate that we move through this transition of, uh, of, of hopelessness in the case of others. So I think that my leadership was accepted. I'm still, I'm still the same Never Smoker that came and campaigned for the presidency of MMD. The wrangles but, that have been going on and, and the activities and what is coming out. But if you allow me to finish, there's, there's, no, there's, there's, there's no re rejection. There are always, there's not a particular leader in this country who is accepted by everybody. 
Everybody, President Sata, not everybody in his own party accepts him. President HH, not everybody in his party accepts him. President Mumba, not everybody, not even Jesus was accepted by everybody. So to ask that you have not been accepted is really too much of a big of a question. I have been a leader since I was young. I've, I've, I've raised churches. I've got 52 churches in this country. And, and what kind of leadership did I use to do that? What kind of leadership did I use to, to run as vice president? So the question of saying that you have been rejected, everybody has been rejected, Every, you, including yourself. You have been rejected by some of your colleagues here. But that doesn't mean you are not going to forge ahead because there are people who believe in your leadership. There are people who see the pearl, the beauty of your leadership, and they are going to follow you and support you. It's not everybody who's going to support you. Mr. Pat, a, a good number of your senior party officials, particularly in the NEC, you had a revolt some time back of probably six NEC members. And now what is coming out of the papers is that you've warned some NEC members for not participating in the party activities. We have names that have come up in the papers. We have General Shikapasha, we have names like Felix Mutati. All these are people that really contributed to the party and are quiet, suddenly. Well, let me, let me correct something. I do not think that my national secretary, who had a very successful press conference, act, mentioned those names. I, I, it's unfortunate that somebody put those names that uh, Honorable Shikapuasha, you know, uh, Honorable Mutati, uh, and Honorable Konga uh, are the ones that we're talking about. I think it's unfair for anybody to do that. The but do they attend? Yeah, Honorable Konga attends. Uh, Honorable uh, Mutati has attended. Uh, Honorable Shikapuasha has attended some. So I think that it's unfair for the press to, to put words in our mouths. L let me explain something that a lot of people do not know. You must understand that MMD is a very unique political party. It's a unique political party because it's an institution. It's not a one-man show. If it was a one-man show, I would lead this party very differently. I would just say, the 16 of you that are, are fighting against me, get out. I'm going to replace you. But not MMD. MMD is an institution. We believe in, in elections. That's why we have started this reorganization of the party uh, that you know, was announced by the National Secretary. Why? Because we want to fix this party. We want to go to a convention. And by the way, we are the only political party in this country that talks about elections and convention in a periodic manner. Because to us, it defines who we are. Democracy and conventions. Of course, some people will say, maybe Dr. Mumba doesn't want to go to a convention. Of course, I want to go to a convention. When I am a product. Going to the convention? I am a product of the convention. I went to a convention when I was least expected to win. They told me I didn't stand a chance. I was a civil servant coming from Canada. There were people that were already established here. You know, you can give it a try, but it won't help. But for me, I do not just listen to what is coming through the ears. I, I listen to what I feel in my heart is the right thing for that time, for the country, and for myself. And I ran that campaign, and we won overwhelmingly 70% landslide in a convention. It wasn't a side convention. It was a real convention. That is why I want to encourage all my colleagues in MMD that this is your party. It's a party in which you can participate. What the National Secretary announced and started to do in reorganizing the party is going to lead us to having the convention at which we are going now to come up with a strong, resolute, working, determined team that is going to first 2016. When are, you going, to, when, when are you going to the convention? We have a process that has started. The process is fixing from the ward level, from the branches, wards, and we are fixing it all the way to the province. And once the provincial uh, programs are finished, the next level is the national convention. According to our constitutional calendar, it will be in 2016. We are all getting ready to have the convention so that we can now provide leadership that is going to stand for the 2016 election and uh, be ready to face the challenge that will be there. You have been reorganizing since, since you lost power. You're still reorganizing. How, how long is this process going to take? Well, I, I think the National Secretary just announced. You remember after the Mangango uh, challenge, uh, I did give a directive to the National Secretary. I said that we now need to reorganize our party and there will be no sacred cows. We have not been able to carry out a sustained program of reorganization because we have had 23 by-elections in two years. We have had, I don't know, you know, dozens of uh, uh, local government seats, which has never happened in the history of this country since independence. So most of our efforts have been going to do the elections and the by-elections, by and we have not been able to have a consistent way to fulfill this program. That is why it was announced and launched last week. So I think it is important for us uh, to understand that this process of MMD is a clear process of reorganization. 
It's going somewhere to the provincial conferences to end up with the national convention, which I'm excitedly looking forward to because I want to end up with a team and a party that is able to move uh, into the 2016 election with, with um, gusto and, and strength and, and vision. And I think we need to go through the convention in order to Political analysts argue that once a party has served its papers for which it was formed, and that is the end. UNIP, for instance, uh, the purpose was to bring independence and the initial development, and now it's gone. People don't think about it. There is MMD now. Well, it brought back multi-party democracy, li liberalized the economy. Your purpose is done. No coming back. You do not want democracy to continue. Who's going to sustain democracy since PF does not have either internal or external democracy? Or who is going to sustain this? MMD represents values that are timeless. And because MMD presents, represents values that are timeless, it is a timeless party. It will be relevant today because people need their God-given freedoms to express themselves, to be able to, uh, uh, to, to, to participate in the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the economy of the country. Innovation comes out of freedom. So I think that for you to say that uh, its purpose is finished, I think that is uh, the, the furthest statement from the truth because everybody wants their freedom and we are guardians of those freedoms and I've just been talking to you about us going through the uh, conferences at the provincial level going to uh, 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 the, 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 the convention where we're going to choose new leaders which other political party can pride itself in that in this country which one can talk about uh, conventions that's why I laugh sometimes I say members and the PA and the MMD go to the convention you need to go but I understand why they want MMD to go to a convention because they know it's the only party that respects conventions and democracy. And that's why we respond, to make sure that we continue to provide that leadership in this area. A, um, a free market economy that has been brought about by the movement for multi-party democracy. That's a timeless uh, 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 situation that needs to constantly be uh, pursued in order for the innovation of the individual to be uh, released and realized in our country. So you can't say that our mission is over. Uh, like you need got independence and it's all over after that. I think the MMD has a timeless message and this message is going to last. Do you think your slogan, the hour has come, is still relevant? Well, the beauty of that slogan uh, is that it leaves it hanging. The hour has come for what? Um, the hour has come for a new beginning, for democracy, for multipartism. The hour has come for a free market economy. The hour has come and all those things have been achieved, by the way. Uh, so today, if you look back, under the, uh, President Chiluba's uh, leadership, the hour has come. He also had a theme of saying that uh, it's a new culture, if you remember, a new culture that he brought about, a new culture of work, dedication, private enterprise, people need to be committed to working. Then we had the, 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 the other slogan that came up with President Wanawasa, which was the new deal, the MMD, the new deal. So the hour has come, but it's, we still had the new deal. We had uh, continuity uh, that came with President Rupia Banda. Then we have the hour for new hope that I've brought to the table and the new leadership has brought to the table. So we will continue to use the new hour to announce the arrival of different aspects as we develop, uh, as, as we develop, as we move forward as a political party. Is the MMD broke? If MMD was broke, MMD would not be here. Let me also mention that there are people that have make certain decisions about why they want MMD to, to fail. This issue of said MMD has failed, uh, is broke, started a long time ago after we lost the election. And it is true that when I took over the party as MMD, there wasn't any money in the party, absolutely nothing. Um, but together as a team, we started to work to rebuild the prospects of the party. This party should have been dissolved and deregistered by the PF uh, when I became president, because that was the first thing they tried to do. They gave me 21 days as president when they called me on the phone. They said, you have 21 days to pay 400 million. And I had just become president. I went to my colleagues in the leadership. We need to raise this money. They said, where are we going to get it from? I said, we have to pitch the dream and the vision of our party. And where we just came through and were able to pay the 400 million. We have, as I've said, 23 by-elections. And each by-election does not cost less than 100 or 150 million. And we have participated in almost all of them, except three. 
Um, and we have had local government elections that have taken place all over this country. Dozens of them. We have participated in all of them. If they say we are broke, what are we using? Is it stones or leaves or sand? These are opponents. Broke who, and relying on members of parliament contributions? Members of parliament, it's their obligation. The money they give only supports the secretariat. The money they give cannot even, cannot even uh, uh, be used for a by-election. It's not sufficient. They, we get per month less than uh, 73,000, and that goes into the running of the, of the secretariat. This goes down because you have lost more seats, isn't it? I do not think you understand. Uh, the, you're asking a question that you don't wait for it to be uh, answered. The question you've asked about we don't have money and we're using Parliament's money, don't ask it as though it's a crime or we are not expected to use Parliament's money. PF uses their money. Uh, UPND use, uh, mean get, gets money from their members of Parliament. MMD, what is it about MMD that people always have to make a, a big deal when every political party does it? Number because one. your members have made it a big deal. They've gone to the press and said we're going to withdraw the contribution. Well, Some we of have said, members have we have have said, made it a big deal. Yeah, they can make it a big deal. But you understand that we are going through a transition. There are people that have been disciplined in the party, and I'm very, uh, uh, I have to be very careful when I say this. They have been disciplined in the party, and um, they are going to say certain things. Our position is that every member of parliament that has become a member of parliament on the MMD ticket has obligations to the party. If, for, for instance, one day he says he's going to withdraw the money uh, that he gives, then he also withdraws his membership almost automatically. Because we are only working with the committed people. We're working with people that want this party to work. You know, you can't be looking to uh, PF, looking to UPND, all, all the time you want to jump because your party now is in opposition and you need to work together to build that party. And I'm calling on all our members that building a political party that has lost power, it demands a lot from us. But God has raised people out there that I believe are meant for this season in MMD. They are meant to bring healing and restoration to this party. It's not everybody. Some people can't handle being in opposition. That is why they look to PF, because PF is in power. And Do they you have some members that have withheld their contributions? No, I don't, not anything that I'm aware of. There's nothing on the table. There's no one who has not been paying. Up to today, every member of parliament who is called M MMD pays his dues to the party. And it's expected uh, that they pay that money. Is it true that you only went with about 11,000 to Mangango to campaign and without a, a, a team accompanying you. Do you know that when uh, you read on online and read about the people talking about MMD, how, uh, what is the English word, how they continue to want to despise MMD, 11,000, do you know how much it costs to, 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 to run a campaign? Where did that 11,000 come from? Who wrote that? What was his intention? We have enemies in MMD, and this is why I believe that MMD uh, Gravazio is going somewhere. Because if MMD was not going somewhere, people would not be so uh, interested in trying to destroy MMD, which doesn't mean anything. MMD, as I've already told you, we have handled a lot of money. I wish we had more, because campaigning is expensive. I'm not saying that in all these political um, contests we've had, we've had enough money or sufficient money. But we've had money to be able to carry out the campaign. But I didn't take 11,000. I spent more than 11,000. Our team spent more than 100,000 on that campaign itself. Everything put together. More than 100,000. So if somebody writes 11 and you make it the gospel truth, it becomes difficult for us to help that type of people because I think that they don't mean well. Absolutely not. I think that we, are cha we have challenges as MMD in making sure that all our bills are met. We have challenges like every political party does have. Even the ruling party has got their own uh, challenges. But we have to fight through that because this is the nature of African politics. We have to fight through that. And we are appealing to all our sympathizers, our supporters, our members nationwide. This is time to regroup. This is time for you to get a hold of your party. It's the only party that you can be proud of in terms of democracy and being able to make itself uh, available as a national party. So I think that in terms of money, I think that we do have what it means to run around. We can use more. And that is why we continue to appeal to well-wishers to support us. There's heightened talk and calls for former President to be abandoned to come back to active politics. Is this haunting you? 
Grefas, you're the, the when you deal with a rumor, I do not participate in rumors myself. It's a rumor that uh, that we have also heard, like you have heard. This is a media, media report. There are people who are authentic who have come up and said, yes, maybe you should come back. This so, thing, this is that haunting you. We saw it happen in UNIP. Started like this. Absolutely. Uh, it's happening in MMD. Absolutely not. I, I think that the beauty of this thing is that I have a very good relationship with President Banda. And I think that if there was any information of this nature, it would be something that would be uh, discussed and I would know about it. He has not mentioned it to that degree that there's any need for him or he wants to come back. But let me make it very, very clear that at the moment I am president of the Movement for Multiparty Democracy. I came in through an election. And you must remember that the respect I have for the president is to the extent that I've, I've, I've associated with him. And I know what is important to President Rupia Banda. I do not think in any way he would wish to do anything that would disadvantage his party from winning the 2016 election. By that, I'm, I mean um, if he doesn't discuss it with us. But I do not think that he has said that at any time. And I do not want to join the people that are putting words in his mouth. Have uh, you spoken to him? What is he telling you? President Banda and I talk about a lot of things. Talk about the party, talk about the country but we have not discussed that particular issue in the manner that you are bringing it about. But my, my point that I want to make is that when I became president of MMD, the one who handed the instruments of power to me was President Banda. He gave it to, to me and, 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 and said that he was going to continue to support my leadership and uh, that we're going to move forward as a team. I think that I need to send a warning to a lot of people. Number one, some of our people that would come to me and say, well, President Banda says he's coming back and he's going to do this to you. I have refused to entertain those people because I have an open relationship with the President Banda. And the same people, some people still go to President Banda and tell him, never see saying this or doing this, trying to divide us. I want to say, though, for those of you that think I'm going to divide President Banda and myself, that you will not succeed. If he decided he wanted to come back, would you give way? I think that's a different question now, because you're assuming that when the, it says President Banda wants to come back, that he wants to come back to MMD as president. I think President Banda has not said that, and it is wrong for us to debate what he has not said. If he said it, I would know how to deal with that or handle that as president and as the National Executive Committee. I would know how to handle that, but he hasn't said it. And to debate something that he has not said, to me, I think it's, um, it's not fair. And I have to say that... Have you discussed it in NEC? It's not a subject of discussion in NEC. It's, it's not a discussion in NEC. It's not one of the agendas. And uh, we, there's no vacancy for the presidency of MMD at the moment. So it cannot be discussed in NEC because there's no vacancy. So I think that what we need to do now, Grevasio, to be fair to President Banda, I have not heard him once say that he wants to come back. And because he has not said it, it will be unfair for you or for me to start to put something on him that he has not said. If I was President Banda, I would like people to leave me alone. If I'm going to make a certain decision, I will make the decision. And I'll call the time when I'll do that. I just think that at the moment, um, my concentration as president is to make sure that I foster the unity of the party. In, in, in Zambia and politics, this seems to be... A, a, a leadership style of some sort where leaders do not really come out when an issue is being presented about them they will not talk and say I'm leaving it for the people to debate then eventually the, the, what the people are talking about usually is what they want we've seen this happen well I, I cannot go back into the history I, I am dealing with my situation now as president I really do not want to be obstructed this has been a huge project that God has given me and the people of, of MMD, the members of MMD, have asked me to do, to get a political party that was in government and transition it back into government. It's a huge project that needs everyone's support. It needs the former president's support. It needs all the members in the country to support. It's not a small project. I'm just grateful to God that this is September of 2014, and MMD is standing stronger than it was when I started with it because we have held tightly to keep the unity that we need to move it forward. And I do not think that at this time I'm going to uh, move away from concentrating 
on rebuilding this party to start to debate a subject that has not been put on the table uh, by the former president. And, and I also want to warn, like you cut me short, the reason I'm giving the warning is that some of the, our members think it's romantic to talk about uh, putting a wage between me and President Banda. It's not romantic. I can say this. If another fight begins in MMD, the losers are the MMD members themselves. Because there will be no political party if we start to fight. The members of the party have fought several battles to be where we are. And like I've said, a lot of them are battle weary right now. What they want is some space of peace, reorganization, prepare ourselves for 2016 elections. Do you think wrangles of the party have come to an end? Would you predict like that? I think that for the most part, uh, we have left the worst part behind us. The reason is simple, that we needed to show resilience, that we are committed to keeping democracy in our nation, and MMD, Zambia needs MMD. And we made sure that we fought to make sure that the party remains. And I congratulate the members of the National Executive Committee, the members in our provinces and districts who have held strongly to make sure that MMD remains strong. So we can't say that all problems have ended. There's no political party who, which has no problems. PF has problems. All the other political parties have problems. It's how you navigate through it. And this is why I say, Grabazio, that leadership is not judged by the battles you fight. But it is judged by how resiliently you fight those battles and how you come out of them. We are going to fight these battles. Some people mistake the battles we have fought as MMD to say that the leadership of Nevers is not good, or the leadership of the current National Security Committee is not good, the leadership of the National Secretary is there is not good. Absolutely not. We, they, they are these fights because there are different views on different matters that people hold. And MMD is a democratic party that will allow people to debate. But at the end of the day, we have a strong constitution. We have a strong constitution that settles these matters for us, fortunately, as MMD. So I think that at the moment, uh, my goal is to work on uniting the party and moving forward. I would not want another big upheaval to come because we are close to 2016. And uh, so we will try to do our very best to make sure that we continue to work as a family and welcome everyone, those who have left, for whatever reason, whether they were disciplined or maybe something happened to them. I appeal to them. This is your party. Come back home. Let's reorganize ourselves. We are now opening up all the provinces, the districts, the constituencies, the wards, the branches, and also culminating into uh, a, a convention. And also to encourage our colleagues, some of them who, when we ask them to come with us to uh, buy elections to help their party, maybe they are not that enthusiastic because maybe they fall their arms saying that, let's see, if never fails, then at the next convention, they are going to elect me the president. The problem with that is that by the time the convention comes, there will be no party for you to run as president for. Are you standing at the convention in 2016? We are working towards 2016, and my goal right now is to prepare our party for the convention. I'm preparing the structures for the convention, and when the time comes, I'm going to announce. You have not yet decided. I'm going to announce. Right well, now, I am president of the party and I'm busy making sure that we organize this party. What is your strategy for mobilizing the party come 2016? Since we've seen that from the time you assumed leadership, the fortunes have really dwindled for the party. I that think that is one of the reasons why we are now, after all these battles that we have fought, after we have had all these by-elections that were really uncalled for and too much of an expense on the Zambian people, uh, I think we have... After our post-mortems, as we have met, looked at why we lost some of the elections, uh, where we are weak, and now that is why you heard our national secretary uh, dissolve some organs of our party. That is not to say that we don't necessarily like the people in those organs. It is as a result of the submissions from the provinces, from the districts, from the constituencies, as they have submitted them to us after analysis or the, the post-mortem of the results. And when we have looked at them as the national uh, team and realized that maybe this organ uh, is weary, it's tired, you know, let's make sure that we re revive this one. Maybe here there's this disloyalty. This Some people maybe are, are dilly darling to see where they should go. Let's change that. So there are various reasons for why the dissolution has taken place. It's not one reason. It's various reasons. So I think now the, um, the reorganization has begun because we are now dealing with hot spots, first aid, fix what is broken, then we are now alongside that work we have started. We are going to move now from province to province, 
fixing structures, preparing provinces for, pro, pro, for provincial uh, conferences until, like I said, we come to uh, the national uh, uh, convention. So I think it's a systematic uh, program. It may take us a little longer uh, as we make sure that we uh, distribute the money in organization, but also in the by-elections and other demands that are upon the party. So it, it's um, a costly exercise. The good news is that we have started it. You recently observed that the, the general feeling within the party is that the, those committed to the party's cause among MPs and NEC members isn't sufficient, are insufficient to make any meaningful impact. I, I think that uh, it's a very normal development, uh, Grabazio. It's a normal development. We have not enough commitment. Yeah, it happens. Remember, we've been in government for 20 years. Uh, some of the colleagues have been ministers for a long time. Uh, there comes a time when it's not for, uh, for a bad reason. They just are tired. They would like to uh, maybe finish their term in parliament and do something else. Um, and you cannot demonize them. I mean, getting tired is not a sin. But all that we are saying is that uh, if you feel tired that you really can't participate, because uh, we can't keep using the same people for campaigns, and then this is what happens, that if we lose an, an election, the same people who don't go for campaigns are the first ones to talk that the party is finished. How do you expect to win an election when you don't go there as a member of the party to go and support them? Everybody needs to do something. Everybody needs to put in its very little. It could be little, but they need to put in something to make sure that the party moves forward. So I think that at the moment, uh, there is emerging within our party a new team, a new team that is being energized. And I see that team as the one that is going to take us to 2016. So what is happening is normal. Some people get tired, some people get weary, some people not getting used to the new leadership or the president, and it happened in Chinuba's days. A lot of people that left the Chinuba time, a lot of people left during the Wadawasa time, a lot of people left during the Arab time, and a lot of people could leave under my time, especially that I am in the opposition as a, the first, uh, in, in real terms, the first uh, opposition president of the movement for multi-party democracy. So my challenges are a little bit different from those of my colleagues who have gone before me, but we are taking them on as they come. And what by is the self-rating of your party? For, are you number one, two, three, four? I'm all not right, going to go there. there. All, all I can say is that what we are working on as a party is to win the next election. Now, if you want to rate from that point and come back on it, then I'll leave that with Grebazi because you're a very educated gentleman. But I think our goal is to, to work on this party to the extent that when the election comes, being a national party will be in a place where we can do what we must do, and that is to win the election. And there so are the of an alliance come 2016. We've seen we've, at some point MMD and UPNDA were each other's thoughts. Listen, I think what is important is that we need to accept that all these political parties are individual political parties. That's the first thing. Uh, MMD is in this space to create for itself a route to form government in order for us to execute our policies and our positions that we have constantly articulated. That is our goal, to form government and be able to uh, work out um, our policies uh, which we believe are, are, are very modern in terms of moving forward. Now, are we going to unite with any other political party? Uh, if at all a situation arose which demanded that that would be something that the Zambian people would want and it's something that our membership thinks is in the interest of the, of, of the party and the people, uh, we have been looking at different options before and we are ready to look at it. But for now, I think that we are concentrating on rebuilding the party. Like I've said, we have started an aggressive reorganization of our party. That is where um, you know, we are going to spend a lot of our time. And as we move forward, if there's any need to work with anybody, I think if the conditions are right, they believe in what we believe, they see what we are seeing, I do not see any reason why we cannot uh, compare notes and see what, the, what is possible. But as of now, uh, we are not engaged in uh, anything uh, with uh, one particular political party. We are right now involved, however, in an alliance of four or five political parties now. And uh, that is MMD, that is ABZ, that is uh, uh, Z, uh, that is uh, uh, PP, which is uh, President Longotis, and uh, APC. And uh, we meet to discuss how uh, we can 
put our energies together, our resources together to make sure that we face the next election as one unit. So that is it by coincidence that you've decided to be in an alliance with political parties that many would say have no reasonable membership. They have no members of parliament in the house. I think a, politi a registered political party is a registered political party and it represents a certain ethos and a certain view and they should be respected for what they respect and whatever that value they bring into the alliance and we all uh, benefit from that value. I think that uh, for us what is important is that we have found common ground and we are talking and working and moving forward together. The government has moved a step further in the constitution making process, reopened dialogue with civil society. Your views? Well, firstly, I must commend uh, uh, the Honorable Lu, uh, the new National Secretary for uh, PF, in, in this regard, uh, that uh, as Justice Minister, he has opened up dialogue and opened his doors, at least, to have this situation discussed. My advice to the PF is that um, let, they should not play with this issue as a small issue. They promise the Zandam people. And they cannot imagine in their life season that they are just going to gloss over this thing and Jambians will forget about it. They'll be punished for this. PF will be punished if they don't own up with what they have promised. And in their negotiations with civil society, I would like to propose honesty, sincerity on the part of government. Because we are not children. Zambians are not children. Zambians have been waiting for this, um, uh, for, for this constitution for a long time. It should have come in 90 days. This is three years. Honestly, even if you have if you, if, if, you, if you are forgiving. There comes a time when the government might say, you know what, we have lied too long. We have not done the right thing. Let's respect the Zambian people either by telling the Zambian people, please forgive us for having promised something that we've not been able to deliver. Are you talking with the Justice Minister as opposition parties? Well, I, I think that um, the, we are part of the Grand Coalition. Um, and uh, as the Grand Coalition engages uh, the minister, we are also engaging the minister uh, from that uh, point of view because we're part of the Grand Coalition on the Constitution. It, some people may say, don't you find it strange that as the NMD, something that you fail to deliver or you have to really push the, 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 the PF to deliver? Grabazio, you, 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 the least to complain about it. We have explained this before in two ways. Number one, MMD promised that they were going to do a, um, a review of the Constitution and we did it. Uh, that we're going to get a constitution delivered to the Zambian people. We didn't give 90 days. We didn't give 180 days. We told them once the process is complete uh, as we move forward. And we came to the place where the bill was even presented in Parliament because that's as far as a political party could go and as a government could go. Once it goes to Parliament, the democratic forces kick in. At that time, the PF rejected uh, the, 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 the bill, including the UPND. That's how the whole dream of the uh, Constitution and the NMD failed. Rejected it under very good reason. Well, I, I think that uh, we should all take responsibility. So they should not take around the NMD to do it. That thing came from the NCC. After the NCC, where everybody, 600 uh, delegates were there, then it was taken to Parliament. Then these two political parties throw it out and blame them. Let's be fair. The challenge we have here is not to go back and blame them. The challenge we have here is that PF promised Zambians that within 90 days they were going to give a constitution to the Zambian people. It has not happened. That's the issue. That's the contention. That's the thing that the PF must deal with. It, it doesn't matter how long the MMD took to come to bring it to Parliament. And we had the intention of enacting it, but they shut it down. So I think at the moment, my advice to PF, if they want to save their legs on this thing, they have to come clean and deal with it. They can't put it under the table. They can't assume that Zambians are down or they are not going to deal with it. Zambians will punish the patriotic front for this thing if they don't do it. As we close, under a minute, your relationship with God. This talk keeps on coming up that you probably have abandoned the church. Thank you so much, Gravazio. Let me mention that my involvement in the political process comes from the fact that I'm a believer in Christ. The Bible makes it very clear that when the righteous rule, people rejoice. It's God's wish. In other words, God is proposing that for Zambian politics to move in the right direction, get men and women of, of morality involved in the governance of this country. 
Why is that important? Because our goal and that of my heart is not just to change governments. We must now change politics. And changing politics means we change players. If the Zambian people, we are going to continue to vote in the same type of people doing the same type of politics, we should not expect anything different. And for me, Christ is number one in my life. God is number one in my life. I'm doing what I'm doing because I believe God desires justice in this country. And there's no way in the scriptures where it says a, a servant of God or a child of God cannot participate in the political process. It, it doesn't say that. And when people raise that issue, they're suggesting that I substituted God for politics. Absolutely not. I'm still a pastor. I still preach almost every Sunday. I have 52 churches in this country. So it was, it, it was a situation that was brought about by the opponents trying to maximize me that I've left God. If I left God, I would not be in politics. I have come to politics to bring God in values in the political process. Because basically, if we do not change the politics of Zambia, if God does not take over the, Lord, the lordship of this country, our efforts as politicians will continue to be abusing people, telling lies to people, continuing to move forward and move backwards again. So I think that it is important for those who question whether I'm even a Christian or not, to know that I am in politics because I love the Lord and I want to contribute to making my country better. Dr. Mumba, we've run out of time. Thank you so much. Well, you've been watching Sunday interview and our guest this evening was Dr. Tanegas Mumba, the president for the movement for Party Party Democracy. Till next week at the same time, pleasant evening.